The following program is paid for by Main Street Living. Hi, I'm Pastor Matthew Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Starting in the late 1950s, Lutheran Hour Ministries aired a television program called This is the Life in their efforts to bring Christ to the nations. It was a critically acclaimed show that used story and drama to convey eternal truths from God's Word. And it featured actors who were just getting started in their careers. Recently, Lutheran Hour Ministries, in partnership with Main Street Living, remastered and brought to HD quality about 50 of these programs. You may notice some young actors who have become very famous. And even though the props and styles are of the 1960s and 70s, the subject matter is still very relevant. So please sit back and enjoy this week's episode of This is the Life. not nearly as uptight as she was at first. Says the other children are asking when Karen gets to come home for a visit. Oh, she's a beautiful kid. You know, she's taught herself the tune to Sunshine. Hums it all the time. Yeah. Jane, uh, did somebody come for Jeremy? No, I thought it was in the rec room. Shazam's on. Oh, he never got there. And I can't find him in any of his usual haunts. Since when? 10.30, I guess. Yeah, I should have known. He had his hopes up about his mother might show. Why? Oh, by the way, Mrs. Clark wants to see you in the chapel office. Yeah, all right. One of the uh, volunteers, the uh, Bible study on Thursday, got a little carried away trying to cheer him up. Oh, uh, Mrs. Clark? She's pretty upset. Yeah, okay. Um, did you check his uh, garden project? Oh, yeah, the marigolds. I'm sorry. That's right. I'll ask Caroline if she saw him. Oh, you want the alarm? No, let me check the garden first. Oh, I can do it. No, I'll do it. I need the exercise. I've been sitting around here too long anyway. <laughs> well, if you need me, I'll be at the cottage. Okay. Oh, sorry. Didn't think about the flowers. Don't worry about it. Hey, what are you doing to the flowers, huh? Where's my mother? Well, Jeremy, um, I'm afraid your mother can't come today. She never comes. Oh. Tell me, Mr. Morse, do you believe that the state programs are adequate considering the current rate of unemployment? Well, first of all, let me emphasize there is nobody in the state legislature with the consistent record of concern for and action on the behalf of the working man or woman in this state. I know their concerns. They're my concerns. However, you have to recognize that any short-term easy solutions have the possibility of triggering still another what round a load of, of the old fertilizer and wages, which would actually have an ultimate impact that would hurt the working man rather than give him the assistance that he needs and deserves. Thank you, Mr. Morse. We've been talking to Representative Albert Morse of the 3rd District. Be with us tomorrow when Newswatch interviews a group of ladies who say they're ready to start the second American Revolution. That's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I'm Stephanie Powell, and this is Operation Newswatch. Claire. Hmm. Well, I appreciate your taking the time. Always happy to. Yeah. 
The exposure never hurts. <laughs> right, right. Mr. Morse. Well, thanks for coming in. Hello. Car's ready, Mr. Morse. Okay, Johnny. My boy says I gotta go, so I better move. Right. You're a lovely girl. Oh, well, thank you. Bye. Goodbye. How boring was that? Well, I only had eyes for you. You, sir, are mad. And you love it. You're right. <laughs> Go with Bill Bronte, here. Oh, we ought to send him to the Middle East, maybe bore everyone to death and prevent war. Anyway, as far as that lady reporter's concerned, I'll be on my best behavior and speak of no one but you. <laughs> well, maybe I should come along. Oh, my darling, she crucified me on the spot out of sheer spite. <laughs> oh, Stephanie, a Carl Engstrom called while you were in the studio, and he'd like you to call him back. Who is uh, Carl Engstrom? Oh, he's just this um, dreary agent who wants to get one of his clients on the air. Nothing important. Carl Engstrom. Hello, yes, this is Stephanie Powell. I'm sorry it took so long to get back to you. Everything all right? Well, no accidents or anything. It's just that some of the staff's been concerned. Uh, it's been, uh, what, eight months now since you've been able to get up to see Jeremy. Yeah, I know. I, I've just been terribly busy, that's all. I'm planning a trip up there next month. You can tell him I'll see him then for his birthday. Well, he'll be glad to see you. And we'll have a chance to go over his progress and reestablish contact. I look forward to that. Well, uh, give him a big hug and kiss and tell him I'll see him soon. Come on, buddy, a big one. Beautiful. Great. Great. Come on, it's Bearing gifts. Look at the size of For you. Just came, special delivery. Okay, let's give you a hand. Beautiful. Oh, man. Wait a sec, you almost lost the card. Thanks, Carl. Oh, it's not from me. It's, uh, it's from your mom. Mom? To you upon this special day come thoughts of love most true, for the greatest joy a mother knows is having a son like you. <laughs> hey, dear, that's great. She wrote something else. I uh, hope you and your friends will have fun with this. I'm sorry that I can't be with you on your special day, but we'll surprise you one day soon. Uh, much love and kisses, your mom. My mom's not coming. Well, I'm sure she could if she. Let's uh, let's yeah. have some cake here. She's not Come coming. On, cake, Jeremy. Jeremy, listen. Uh, not coming. I mean, it's all right. Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy, wait. <laughs> she just couldn't make it this time, that's all. Sometimes there's just so much pointless, dumb cruelty. He was doing so well. Maybe, um, maybe if he called his mother, try to explain to her. I've called her at least once a month since her last visit in December. Nothing. What have I got to say that's new? that even if Jeremy's retarded, he can still feel love, and he can feel the lack of it, that he's regressing. He's losing skills he's had for years, his emotional adjustment suffering, and he's wetting the bed for the first time since he was six. Now, something in there ought to get through to the glamorous Miss Powell. I'm sorry, that wasn't exactly productive or professional. But cathartic, maybe. She is his mother. That's right. She is his mother. Steve. Hmm. Guess what? Well, what? Do you know what my horoscope says today? <laughs> no. <laughs> it says um, I'm going to share something with someone I love. A secret? 
Now, here. Yeah. Jessica caught the secret. What's more? No, no, I, I didn't think you had any secrets left. Well, not from me, anyway. Well, no. It's not really a secret. It's more like something you don't know about me. Hmm. I, uh... Well, whatever it is, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Did you know I had a son who's 16? No. Why didn't he ever tell me? He's not normal. Well, on a good day, his mind is that of a four-year-old child. How come? I mean, what happened? When he was a baby, his father... Well, his father had been out with the boys, and the usual number of drinks. When he got home, he wanted to feed his son his supper. He dropped him. This must have been hell for you. It's one of the many reasons that my... my ex is my ex. Anyway, he's back east in a home. Not far from his grandmother. I just... I just wanted to promise you that this would never touch us. What do you mean? If it touches you, it touches me. No. No. It isn't part of us. Ever part of us. short sleeve shirt and blue jeans when last seen. And now, turning to the weather. Low clouds tonight through mid-morning tomorrow, otherwise mostly sunny. Slightly warmer with highs near 80 tomorrow, highs near 84 by Monday, lows tonight around 65. Today's Civic Center was 78. And that's News Watch with Stephanie Powell. <laughs> Newsroom, Miss Powell. Yes, I, I've been intending to call you. D did he get the package I sent? Good, good. Lunch? Well, uh... Yes, I'd love to. Fine, I'll see you there at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Right. It's seriously affecting him, and not just emotionally, but his learning, his adaptive process, everything. It's all wrapped up into one, and I think it's because he misses you. Come on, Miss Tankstrom. I'm sure you give him so much love. Keep him so busy. He doesn't have time to notice I'm neglecting him. Uh, we give him everything we can, but he knows we're not his mother. Okay, Miss Tankstrom, look. For 17 years, I've tormented myself about that boy. I've done penance for him since I was 22 years old. And right now, I'm tired of it. Can you understand that? I mean, for the first time in my life, things are beginning to fall into place, at least halfway decently. And I intend to give myself a chance for once. Are you talking about your marriage? I read the piece in the paper a couple of weeks ago. My marriage is part of it. Did you stop seeing Jeremy because of your fiancé? No, I mean, my fiancé knows I have a retarded son, if that's what you mean. He just, he thinks he's back east. Out east? Why is that? I need to put as much... I need to 
put as much distance between him and me as I possibly can right now at this point in my life. You'll never be able to keep up a fiction like that I when know, you're married. I know, I know, and I'll face that problem when I come to it. And, and now that you've put me in the role of the Wicked Witch of the North, you might as well know something else. He thinks that Jeremy was injured at birth. Don't you see? We, we may want to have children one day. There are enough problems for a woman my age without a track record of failure like that. The other day, Jeremy was watching television. Yeah. Your show came on. Oh, yeah. Night Watch. Yes. Yeah. He had a tantrum and started smashing things. I'll pay for them. You'll pay for it? That's not what I'm saying. Mr. Angstrom, I'm, I'm, I've lost my appetite. If you'll excuse no, me. No, wait. Listen to me just for a second. For your good as well as his. Don't try to shut him out of your life. He needs you. He needs what you and your husband can give us Mr. together. Keith? Are you seriously suggesting that I should ask my husband to play daddy to a, a retarded child? Come on. Okay, Mrs. Powell, I'm sorry. We'll do everything we can for Jeremy. And another thing, you have no right to judge me when you have no idea what it's like to bring a Jeremy into the world. Our first child had Hurler's syndrome, aggressive brain damage. What happened to her intellect was tragic, but her spirit was radiant. Was? Yes, she died two weeks before her fifth birthday. Or lucky. All right, but let me know the minute you hear anything. Okay. Carl. I didn't know you were back yet. Well, I just walked in. I hadn't had a chance to call my poor wife and tell her I'm alive. But I am alive. What's up? Jeremy's disappeared. Here. When? About 10 o'clock. Teams went out, but no luck. Police have been on it for about two hours now. Ah, boy. Well, I just hope he's not looking for his mother. Because I've got a feeling she died a few years back. Why don't you leave me alone? Yes, I'll come. I'll come. I know what you must think of me. I'm glad you came, Mrs. Powell. Oh, Lord, how I hate waiting. Listen, I, I got to apologize to you to something I said this afternoon at lunch about your little girl. Don't worry about it. Just that... You don't understand how much this marriage means to me. Look, we thought the visits would be a big help, just seeing him here. Maybe a holiday, a part of a summer at home. Even a four-year-old mind knows what love is, and family. Well, there's a service for residents and staff. I ought to be there. Would you come with me? Oh, no, I don't think so, thank you. Well, you're not accomplishing anything by pacing back and forth here. <laughs> I gave up on God a long time ago. Jeremy hasn't. He prays for you every night. As he says to us, this is my body. 
This is my blood. He is speaking directly to each one of us, saying, I love you, each one of you. That's part of what communion is all about. And that's what makes us so happy. seem to think that Jeremy's nothing but wasted breathing space because he's not everything you want him to be. He will never be a full human being. I don't know what a full human being means. I've known a lot of sophisticated people who've managed to kill the love inside them. Love that these people give away so freely. None of us are flawless. We're functional. Did it ever occur to you that Jeremy might have gifts you or I don't have? Oh, yes. I've read all those books that say they're supposed to be angels in disguise. That's nonsense. This is Paul. Whether you believe it or not, God has a reason for Jeremy's being here just as much as for you or I. All right, Mr. Angstrom. If that sentimental pat makes it easier for you to live with what your daughter was, then fine. But don't try palming it off on me. I believe God is using Jeremy in ways he couldn't use a normal person. How is this God of yours using Jeremy? Huh? Out of answers. No, no. I just wish you knew your own son. See, Jeremy, or my Danielle, can teach us so much about the joy and the love that Christ has for us. Well, I'd say your Christ doesn't have very much taste in object lessons. Would you step into my office, please? You know, you're a lot worse off than your son is. One way Jeremy can serve Christ is to batter down the walls you've built up around yourself. He loves you, no matter how hard you try to reject him. No matter what you've let your bitterness make you into. If you could ever realize, no matter how hard you try, you can't shut him out. Then you'd realize what God's love for you is too, because you can't shut it out either. Mrs. Powell. Just by hanging in there, Jeremy can show you what God's love is and how he accepts you. No matter how hard you try to hang on to your guilt and won't let anything or anybody touch you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Jeremy was... 
Jeremy was born 13 months after I left my husband. <laughs> Every time I look into that blank face of him. <laughs> I don't believe God punishes children for things their parents did or didn't do. Oh, what's that marvelous line from the scriptures? As you sow, so no, no, Wait, wait. Any guilt you have about that relationship or the way it's poisoned what you could give to Jeremy, that's all forgiven. You don't have to keep dragging yourself down. Christ died to free you of that so you could live, so you could love. <laughs> love, Jeremy. <laughs> love yourself. When you stop hating Stephanie, you'll start loving him. Because after all, he's a part of you. Yeah, flesh of my flesh. They finally found him. He was uh, down by the farm in one of the barns. They finally heard him crying for his mother. Good. Dean, this is Mrs. Powell. And this is Dean Stanton, one of our ward parents. He's a very good friend of Jeremy's. Welcome. This is, uh, Mrs. Springer's fixing him something to eat right now. Good. You want to join him in the snack bar? No. I can't. I won't. Jeremy doesn't know you're here, so you can just leave. Or you can ask God to give you whatever you need to go down there and put your arms around him and tell him you love him and mean it. This is the life and pattern for living are brought to you by the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod in cooperation with the International Lutheran Layman's League. This program is presented by this station as a service to the religious life of the community. I hope you found this program to be both entertaining and insightful. Even though the show was filmed decades ago, the concerns of those days seem to parallel many situations of today. We'll be back next week with another episode of This Is The Life. In the meantime, I invite you to seek further wisdom from God's Word, the Bible, and I invite you to visit one of our congregations in your area. We are the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and you will find our 6,000 congregations listed at www.lcms.org. This program has been brought to you by Main Street Living, which relies on the generosity of viewers to support this programming. They appreciate your prayers and would also appreciate your financial support. You can view additional episodes of This Is The Life on the Main Street Living website. Thanks for watching. And join us again next week, same time, same channel, for another episode of This is the Life. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate and its member churches. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 
1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105.